Suppose you get a question in your university exam asking you to write a critical appreciation of the poem Sun Rising by John Donne. If the question is of 5 marks, it's pretty easy. You can write uh, one and a half to two pages and you're done. But suppose the same question comes in 25 marks and you have to write about 10 pages long answer, what would you do in such a situation? Don't you think it's difficult to elongate a 15 line poem in a 300 line critical appreciation? It is, but then there are few things which you can include in your answer right away and that would help you to elongate the length of your answers. In this particular video, I'm going to give you certain things which you must include in your answers so that you can elongate the answer. Plus, you can already prepare these uh, topics beforehand so that on the day of the exam, you just need to write it down. You don't need to uh, waste your time in thinking about what to write next in order to fill those six to eight pages. So in this particular video, I'm going to give you some really amazing tips which will help you to get maximum marks in your university exam. These topics will help the examiner to know how well read you are. And also the examiner will get an idea about the fact that you have actually read the text in detail. So include these points to score highest marks in your university exam and become a topper very easily. We all know first impression is the last impression. How you begin your answer shows a lot about your understanding of the text and shows a lot about your interest in the subject. So the examiner is always going to read the first paragraph of your answer in order to judge what kind of student you are and how much knowledge you have in this particular subject. So suppose if you get a question on Paradise Lost, always begin talking about the age in which Paradise Lost was written. So you need to talk about the civil war that happened, the ring of Oliver Cromwell, interregnum, you need to also talk about the political and the religious condition of that period, talking about the closing of theatres and how there was a sh shift in the pattern on uh, of church and working class. So when you talk about all these aspects in the first paragraph of your answer, the examiner is definitely going to feel that you are a very learned man. So always include an introduction to the age. And this introduction to the age should be fancy, okay, it should contain some really nice words and some really nice expression so that it can show your presentation and it can show how uh, refined language you have. So always prepare this introduction to age beforehand and whatever question comes in the exam from that particular unit, always use that particular introduction to begin with. So the first important thing that you must include in your answer, which can also help you to give a very good impression on the examiner is introduction to the age in which the text was written. After giving a proper introduction to the age, it's time to give a proper introduction of the author. Now, if you have a question on T.S. Eliot, for example, Wasteland, and they've asked you to critically analyze Wasteland as a poem, you need to first talk about the modern age. Uh, that should be about half a page long. Then after that, you need to talk about T.S. Eliot as a writer. So you would first mention all the literary achievement this man had, if he has won any Pulitzer Prize or if he is a Nobel Prize winner. After that, you would talk about other works written by him. So you just need to mention that he has famously written these plays, these poems, and he has also uh, made a contribution in critical essays by writing all these essays. So when you mention those works and you can just underline those words so that the examiner gets to know that, okay, your understanding is beyond this particular text that you have read. You don't just know about Wasteland, you actually know about a lot of other works. So after talking about age, you need to talk about the author. So you need to include his literary achievement. You need to also include the kind of works he has already written and you should also include his major influences. For example, if you're writing an answer for Alexander Pope, you should not forget to mention that Homer had a very important influence in Alexander Pope's life. By including all these things, you are giving 
uh, way to more marks. The examiner, when would be reading all these things, would understand that, you know, you are an extraordinary student. Even though you have just made a tiny effort in searching for author's biography and you've just read a few lines, these lines are going to tell the examiner that you have actually spent days reading about the writer. So first point is include an introduction to the age, then include the introduction to the author. The next thing that you must include in your answer is introduction to the work. If the question is from Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot, before you start talking about themes, symbols, you need to give a short introduction to Waiting for Godot. You need to summarize the plot in no more than three lines and then you need to mention if it is a part of a trilogy, what is the subtitle, when was it first published and if that particular play, poem or novel has won any award till date. So when you mention the small introduction, highlight the important portions by either underlining or by changing your pen to black. When you do that, you actually make the examiner realize that you know beyond what was expected from you. Most of the students are going to fill the pages by writing long summaries. On the other hand, they will face an answer sheet of yours where you have beautifully written certain things which other students would completely skip. So always include an introduction to the work before you start talking about the work in detail. And the introduction should contain the most essential points like the subtitle, the date of publication and awards if the play or poem has won any. Finally, you should give an end to the introduction by talking about the literary movement that play is associated with. So if you're talking about any work, you must find out if it was a part of any literary movement. If you go to my website arpitakarva.com, in the online course content section, I have given you a list of literary movements, okay, and every important play, poem, or novel is always a part of an important literary movement. If you're talking about Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, which is a very famous work prescribed in the syllabus of most of the students, you will find out that it was a perfect example of transcendental movement. So transcendentalism ke baare mein include karna bahut important hai apne answer mein. Irrespective of what question has been asked from Leaves of Grass, you need to devote a paragraph talking about transcendentalism, talking about the major writers who were a part of this movement and talking about the contribution of other writers. You need to talk about Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry David Thoreau, talk about Ralph Waldo's famous work American Scholar, talk about Henry David Thoreau's work Walden. So when you talk about these works in even one line, you would be able to tell the examiner that you have actually read more about that particular book than any other student has done. So it is important that you include all these four things in the introduction of the particular uh, answer. So you need to first talk about the age, then about the author, then about the work and then about the literary movement that work was associated with. And you will figure out that you have already written two pages uh, while you were writing about all these things. So it will give you a very good start. You would be able to write an introduction and writing a good introduction is winning half the battle. So two pages you have already written irrespective of the question and now you're just left with a few more pages where you can write a lot of other things about that text. So mere summary is not going to give you marks. You need to go beyond summary and only then you can actually uh, make your answer stand apart. By now you must be wondering that Arpita has told us to write so much about all these things. From where are we going to get the material? It's very simple guys. Whenever you open websites like Great Savers, Park Notes, Cliff Notes, you will find that they have a separate section called about the author. From that section you'll get ample material about the author. You can just pick and choose the line, paste it in the word document under the heading about the author and you are done. 
also wikipedia is a great source if you are looking forward for information about the particular work introduction or if you are looking forward for literary movements so you just need to type aestheticism and a page of wikipedia is going to open in front of you you can just write down the names of the major writers and their contribution so by going through a few web pages you will gather information about all these topics you can just put them under write headings in a word document just learn those seven eight points under each heading and you would be sorted for two pages irrespective of the question you would be able to write a fantastic start also remember that there are other things which you must include in the answer which uh, includes intertextual references quotations i'm going to talk about all these things in the next video lecture where i'm going to give you a list of other things that will make your answer stand apart from other people and that will give you that extra edge which will differentiate your answers from your competitors so that's it for this video lecture. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to receive amazing content about English literature. Also, go and check out our social media platforms where we are running free GoNet quiz for all the UGC net aspirants. You can also go to my website arpitakarva.com and find out the online course that we are offering for UGC net English literature. We have already given you a list of writers which you should not forget to study if you are preparing for UGC net English literature. The list is given on our website. The link is in the description box below. So that's it for this video lecture. We'll meet soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next. Happy learning. Keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com.